Shanghai GDG is a very interesting、uh, developer community. I'm glad somebody has asked this question. And this is where the magic happens. This is primarily a question and answer show. So, if any of you out there would like to ask questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to、uh, our Make the Web Fast series here at、uh, Google Developers,、uh, Developers Live.、Uh, today, we'll be talking about the HTTP archive data format. And boy, do we have a loaded episode of tools, tips, and tricks、uh, for you. But before we get to that, my name is Ilya Grigoric. I'm a developer advocate with the Make the Web Fast team here in Google. I'm Peter Lubbers. I'm a programs manager in the Chrome Developer Relations team, and really excited about、uh, a lot of the the tools that、uh, or the ability that Chrome has to track a lot of these things to make the web、uh, faster.、Uh, today, we're going to talk about this HTTP archive format.、Uh, there's a lot of a lot of cool features in here. Probably a lot of things that. You know, you may not even have thought of. So, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> actually, Peter, yesterday we got together <laughs>、right. uh, to do a kind of a quick run through the through all the different demos that we want to go through, and it took us what an hour and a half or an hour and forty、yeah. minutes. And we discovered even some new stuff.、So. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> tons and tons of stuff.、Right. Um, just a little bit of logistics up front.、Uh, we're going to do a lot of demos, so、uh, don't worry about、uh, trying to capture links or figure out. Uh, which specific、uh, tool we're talking about? We'll actually share、uh, a URL at, at the end where you can find all of the resources. So just kind of sit back and and watch and hopefully、uh, learn a few new things because we certainly learned a lot of new tools just through researching. Right. 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 And I think the reason for this is、uh, one of the most important things, in, in my opinion at least, for performance optimization and working with、uh, on performance in general is having good in- instrumentation. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So a few weeks back, we were actually talking with Justin Catroni from the Google Analytics team about how you can use navigation timing to capture data, performance data out of the browser、um, for things like network timing, JavaScript, web browser performance, and all the rest. And today, I think we're going to go a little bit deeper.、Um, right. We're, we're going to look at a tool、um, that a lot of us use, don't, don't, and we don't necessarily think about how the data underneath is kind of structured and how we can reuse it in different ways. And the tool I'm, I'm talking about is. Packet sniffers or HTTP monitors. Now, you guys probably don't think about it that way because、uh, most of us are used to actually thinking about it as Chrome Developer Tools has a built-in tool, which is a、mm-hmm. network panel, which is actually a packet sniffer or an HTTP monitor. Right. 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 So if I'm going to share my screen here、uh, for you guys. So I'm looking at the Google Developers Live、uh, page right here, and I'm going to open the Chrome Developer Tools and just reload this page. Right. So I have the Network tab open, and If the demo gods are with us, the page will reload. There, there it goes. <laughs> and、gonna、we're going to need their help today. <laughs> yes, exactly. So speaking、Lots、of, of making the web fast, right? So this page is taking a long,、uh, long time to load. Here we go. So now we have this network graph in here, right? And this is an invaluable tool for debugging what's happening with the site. So we can actually see that it took us half a second to connect to this page. Um, and all kinds of other data within this tool, right? So we can click on each resource. Now. This is very very useful, but what if you could actually export this data, or maybe put to put it another way, what if、uh, we could actually take this data out of this tool and maybe import it into another tool?、Mm-hmm. Right, you can do a lot of interesting things with that type of data. Yeah,、uh, up until now, the only way to really do that was. Really, to take a screenshot, <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe annotate the screenshot, put a few arrows, like look at this one or look at the timing on this. That's obviously not a great. So、one. I've done exactly this, and this is <laughs>、right. this is terrible, right? Like、yeah. I would find a problem. I'm like, oh,、exactly. this is I I I need to email Peter about this.、Right. So I take a screenshot, annotate it with like, okay, here's our problem,、right. and then I send it over, and then I get a question back, like, okay, that's cool, but what was the status code or what、mm-hmm. were the headers? I'm like, well. Lost it, <laughs> right? It's it's we lost all the data because、yeah. we froze it in the screenshot. So it'd be really nice if we could actually export this data、um, with all its all of its fidelity, all of the data that's actually hidden within here, right? And then reuse it in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's precisely what the HTTP archive、uh, data format is for. So I'm g- I'm going to show you guys this. We're not going to go into the details of the spec, but there is a spec for it. So the HTTP archive, the extension is har, right? So hence the har show, haha,、mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and The HAR data format itself is just a simple JSON schema, which contains all the metadata that you would need to reconstruct the network waterfall. Right. 
right? So you can think of it as just the underlying data of the network pane in your Chrome Developer Tools or another HTTP monitoring tool. So you can see that it contains a lot of different data, like which browser, which pages you accessed. And entries are the individual requests that the browser makes for all of the resources on the page, right? So I actually have a, uh, a live file here, right? So this is a long file. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but I just want to show you guys, mm -hmm. like, how does this thing look? Right? So what I was so doing. This is JSON format, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's very simple uh, to create and consume, which is actually, right. we'll see later, is very, very important. So I'll just show you guys what this data actually looks like. So here I'm trying to access um, an archives page, right? So I typed in ikvita.com slash archives. And so let me close that. And now we're looking at the entries. So we see the first entry, which is the actual request. So we see that the browser is sending a get request for this actual page. Right? And now, all of a sudden, look at this. You have all of the header information. Right? So every header that the browser appends is here. Even cookies. I probably don't want to show you that. Um, <laughs> and then it's, it has the response, which is, the, OK, so it's doing a redirect. Right? And it will actually kick me out. So let me close this. And we, look, we can look at the next request. And you know, here is the same page asking for a Google Web Font. Mm -hmm. So all of this performance timing data, all of the uh, header data is all captured in here. Right. Which is very, very convenient. So t tell the audience a little bit more about like the httparchive.org site and then sure. how that came about sure. So to really set the Yeah, so a, a good uh, example of mm -hmm. how you could use this data is actually httparchive.org. Uh, so the httparchive format and httparchive.org are actually two separate things. Right. They just right. happen to share the same name, uh, confusingly enough. Uh, but they actually have a common history. Uh, right? And the idea behind HTTP Archive, you guys may be familiar with the Internet Archive, which continuously crawls the web and kind of takes snapshots of certain pages such that you could rewind history and can right. say, I want to see this page, how it looked in back in 2008. Mm -hmm. So think of HTTP Archive as a very similar tool, except that we don't actually care for what the pages looked like. We care about how do they perform. So things like, um, let's capture how many JavaScript files were on the page. What was the total size of the page? How many images did you fetch? All of that metadata, right? right? And this is actually an important uh, point for the HTTP Archive uh, format. Uh, when you export it, by default, it won't export the body of the request. So if you fetch you know, one megabyte image, we're not going to include that. Right. We just include just the, the actual metadata. Exactly. Right, because that's all we need for the waterfall. So, you know, what can you do with this? Well, the idea behind HTTP Archive is that uh, we can crawl <coughs> a lot of sites. So, uh, HTTP Archive actually does about 100,000 sites right now, um, based on uh, Alexa top on top, I guess, 100,000, mm -hmm. and um, it aggregates all of these HTTP archives. So, all of that uh, metadata for all of the network waterfalls, and then extracts kind of meta trends for things like are the pages growing in size or what's happening. So, let me show you this. Uh, we'll go to Trends. And that'll take us one second here. And you can see that, OK, so we're analyzing about actually 200,000 sites now. So it's, it's growing, right? And we can see total transfer size and total request. So it's a little bit small, uh, but an average page within those 200,000 sites today is about, is over one megabyte in size and takes over 85 requests. Mm -hmm. uh, like, that's yeah. shocking. <laughs> I see this number all the time, but it still shocks me every time I see it. Um, the HTML part itself takes 48 kilobytes, right? So this, all of this metadata is just kind of aggregated between all of different runs. From HAR files. From HAR yeah, files. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. So this is a really good example of we've accumulated many of these files. We have them over time, and now we're just kind of collapsing them mm -hmm. together to create these formats, or right. to get to, sorry, not formats, to create these graphs to show you general trends on the web. Right, and you can definitely see that the pages are growing in size, more requests, so on and so forth. Right. Yeah. So let me let me show you uh, something in the um, the Chrome Developer Tools that that you can use. So maybe some sure, people are sure. not aware of that yet. So I can open so this let's up. Let's uh, open it up again and then uh, yes. reload the the page. Yeah. Yep. So now we exactly. we had a what network waterfall in here. Right. So once you get that. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, great. So now you can actually just right-click in the on the left side there. Where, where just, the files just anywhere in here. Just anywhere, yeah. Yeah. And notice the option here. So we have Aha. actually two options, and you can also do this in Firefox, I believe. Um, so copy entry as har. So you can click on an individual file mm -hmm. and save that the har information. For so that. if I clicked on style CSS, it would just 
exactly. just grab that. Just the style CSS. And of course, typically, I think you would be more interested in the entire page with all its resources. So right. Copy all as har. Would copy the har JSON directly to the clipboard. Awesome. Now, if you want to save it as a file, there's an option there, sure. save entry as har. Sure. And that just saves it as a file. So um, yeah, just let's, let's go ahead and okay. do that at the moment. So, so if I just copy this, and I, if I go into my text editor and right. just oops, create a new file here. There. And so wow. So it's 5,000 lines of <laughs> JSON. Yeah. And this is basically all the metadata that it's that's inside of this network waterfall. Right. So with that data, you could effectively reconstruct the network panel. Right. And we'll take an example, uh, have an example of that later. But also, uh, you can pull out specific bits and pieces that you want. I mean, you want to see uh, specific uh, the size of the request or sure. the headers. So all this is really uh, so. Actually, this is like I think worth pausing on because so previously I would just like take a snapshot or a screenshot, right. annotate it, and send it over, right? Yeah. So now I can right click Thanks. on this, copy, and maybe if I'm making a bug report, I can actually attach the entire trace. Yeah. And you have then the developer has full metadata about like everything that's happened in the browser. You could still send me the screenshot as well. Okay, <laughs> so, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But we can reconstruct the screenshot effectively. Right. With that data. Right. Right, right. right. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, so that's interesting. That, that actually brings up a good point, right? So it's like, okay, great. We took this like very nice uh, visual representation. Right. Right. I copied it into a five thousand line JSON file, which is very useful. What but what are you going to do with it now? <laughs> right. Like if I get this five thousand JSON file, right? Boy, you know. Yeah, um, you're going to need some visualization of that data. Right. <laughs> yeah. And fortunately, there's tons of tools that that can help with this. So okay, uh, let's take a look at one. The uh, probably right. the most. Uh, the best one for that at the moment is the, the Har Viewer that you've got in here. It's an mm -hmm. open source project. Um, you can maybe just open it up on the. Yeah, so it looks like it's page. actually, it's yeah, I can run it myself, right? right? So you can just embed it on any page. So it's PHP and JavaScript, which is really cool. But they also have an online demo, right? So we're going to try that. I actually have it pre open here. Cool. So this is what I do here. Yeah, so basically, remember how you copied the har information? So yep. you could obviously, actually, this supports uh, drag and drop as well. You could take the har file and uh -huh. drag it onto this page, but for now, you have it in the clipboard already. Okay. So go ahead and paste it in there. Okay, and so I'm just going to paste the entire 5,000 lines of JSON yeah, in here. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it should. And preview? Keep fingers crossed, and there we go. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's look at that. performant as well. <laughs> right, and so that took no time. Right. And look at this. Now I have. Yeah. This actually no, this is a, a little bit different. Hold on, I think I have something else in my clipboard okay. here. Let's do it again. Well, it probably right. doesn't even matter, but right. So now you get the whole visualization of all that data, and, and right, uh, right. So now cool. that I have this JSON file, I can go to this thing, right. paste it in, and basically reconstruct exactly what happened in your browser. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the the nice thing is I have I still have all of the fidelity of all of the header information requests. Um, the actual timing data, right? So it actually gives you a little bit more than Chrome Developer Tools. Yeah, things yeah, like yeah. Uh, these pie charts for where did the time, where was the time spent? You can see that within this session, we sp we fetched out of all of the content that was fetched, more than half was images, which is actually pretty typical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But so this is really nice. Then you can compare it with other other loads of your page or other right. sites and, and and see sort of the trends in your right. uh, over time. So uh, actually, one thing I wanted to point out. Um, if you can just jump back a moment to the Chrome Developer Tools, one, okay. one really cool thing um, that I particularly like because right now, if you um, if you for example refresh this page, mm -hmm. and well, let's go ahead and do that a moment. So refresh the page, and you notice how the in the network panel, it basically re like it it will reload everything. Uh, right. Is, is right. It, okay. It's still yeah, waiting. So okay. So right now, it sort of wiped out all of the previous information, and it's got the new, and that's typically what you want. Mm -hmm. But now, if you wanted to actually track, uh, you know, navigating from page to page to page, you can take, uh, you can hit the record button on the on the bottom. Ah, there. yeah. I've often wondered what yeah, that thing yeah, is yeah. for. So, click that. Yeah. And then, uh, why don't you go to like the trends page or? Stats. So I think I'm on the trends now. So I'll go okay, to stats. Yeah. Right? Click on stats. Okay. And now let's click on websites. Sure. And why don't we just go finish it off with the about page? So, so basically. What's happening is the information is not thrown away. It's just oh, added on at the so bottom. If I, so let me stop the yeah, recording, stop recording here for a second. And now 
If and you look at this timeline, it actually yeah. says 50 seconds, right? So right. it's not that any one of those pages took 50 seconds. It's just that it's the timeline is actually just appended exactly. across all exactly. the different sessions. It's a complete trace of what you've been doing. So That's really cool. So yeah. now I can do a th I, I can actually do a thing like come to the home page, press record, go to login page, right. Right. go to right. the checkout card, and record that entire trace. Yeah. 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 Cool. So now, actually, go ahead and do it at the moment. Because an uh, interesting thing at the viewer. So okay. Let so again, let me let me copy this. So this yep. is probably like fifty thousand lines of JSON. <laughs> yeah. Let me go to the. Uh, so let me hit back. Back to the home page. Uh, where's our online demo? Here we go. Our viewer yeah. online. Yeah. Just close some of these tabs. So now okay. we're going to put it in there. Okay. And then the nice thing is, so if we hit the preview there, you'll see actually four. Oh, wow. Pages, and you can actually in the top part, uh, sort of even if you just hover over them, uh -huh. you see a lot of detail already. Right. So within in. the session, we just recorded four different pages. Right. 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 And then for each page, we can look at kind of these part charts, but we we also have the full waterfall chart for yeah. each one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And this is just spread over the entire session. So that's. That's pretty awesome. That's right. pretty also, awesome. Also, uh, what I like about it is you, you can actually have a site that has multiple pages. You can really see the outliers, right? You can say, oh, all of them are about the same, but this one is like way out there. What's what's happening to that? Right. You can zoom in, right? And you have a uh, some context. Right? Yeah. Right. So you know, what? now right. now that I see this, what I want is kind of like a record button in Chrome where I can actually tell my users <laughs> to just say like, oh, you're having a problem? Hit record. Yeah. Go go through a couple of pages. Now stop and send me that trace. That'd be really cool. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> All right. Well, th there's an extension in the making. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right after this show. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what are, what's next on our well, on our agenda? So one of we talked about the uh, the, the viewer. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about some other tools. And one of the nice things it, it's not an actual official standard or, or specification. There, I mean, there is a spec. Yeah. But it's um, it's sort of the de facto standard, if you will, for a lot of this information. I mean, uh, not just Chrome, but Firefox supports it. Oh, uh, okay. But there's a lot of other tools. And so yes. maybe you can just go to the right. Har so Adopters page. Right, the, the Har the har, har Adopters page. <laughs> so turns out, um, so Chrome supports Har, as we just saw, right. right? But turns out that most other tools that you guys are familiar with also have a Har export. In fact, the whole point for creating the standard was uh, originally when uh, Firebug and NetExp or HTTP Watch were trying to figure out like how do we come up with a single standard such that we don't end up creating you know different export files. Right. So this is probably three or four years back. So obviously Firebug and HTTP Watch su support this, but if you look through this, IE mm -hmm. Chrome Developer right. Tools, <coughs> we just saw Har Viewer, and you know there's a, probably three dozen different tools in here. And you know, so Charles Proxy is another very popular right. tool, yeah. right? Sure. So right. this is actually an important point. Uh, this is not just in the browser. So if I have a proxy running and I configure my browser to go through it, yeah, exactly. I can still capture right. all the same data, right. which is really yeah, nice. This will come in very handy when, for example, with mobile um, mobile browsers. Yeah, and we'll actually <laughs> see an example of that. <laughs> Talk about that um, yeah. yeah. <coughs> and then I guess the, the other thing to mention is, so the format itself is very flexible JSON, right? Mm -hmm. and which mm -hmm. is nice because most every language out there today has a very good uh, JSON library because it just maps very easily right. to like your basic data types. But if you want, there are wrappers in each language. So things like the Java Harlib, where you just give it the, uh, the har file and it gives you kind of a nice object back, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. you can iterate over. There is Perl, there is Ruby. I found a whole bunch of different right. tools. Right. Yeah, so it, it's it's pretty amazing the amount of support for this. Uh, actually, just over the weekend, we had a. Um, I uh, got a mail from ah, Eric yeah. Duran from New York, who uh, built this great little viewer, which is I, I thought it was awesome because this is actually just the. This um, looks very familiar. <laughs> yeah, I know, doesn't it? <laughs> this <laughs> looks like Chrome Developer Tools. It, it really does. He sort of re-implemented all of that with the uh, with drag and drop support. Right. So, so this is this is a page, right? We're right. looking at GitHub.com/slash/chromehar. <laughs> so yeah. this drag and drop page. a har file. Okay. So I have I happen to have a har file. <laughs> uh, I'm prepared. You can prepare. So I'm. There, Isn't and that look, awesome? look at that. Right, take a look. It's, at that. it's the same tools right. that we know and love. Right, I can click on this. You can see yeah. all of the headers, the yeah. cookies, the timing, and this is just a web app. Yeah, so it's really cool. I think this is actually uh, a good demo of something that not many people realize, which is Chrome Developer Tools 
is is a web app. Is a web app. Right. Right. So I think what Eric is doing here is he's actually pulling out a lot of the styling mm -hmm. um, and perhaps even the JavaScript logic. I think so. Right. Yeah. I haven't completely I didn't have time to look at it yet, but um, that's pretty. Yeah, pretty so that, cool that, that, that's a pretty cool demo, <laughs> right? So if right. if you guys want, uh, there's a hard viewer, and now there's this. And um, he, it looks like he's even thinking about adding some PHP yeah, functionality. Yeah, exactly. We'll come back to that one as well. So. Yeah, so unfortunately, I can't <coughs> click on it right now. But so, so one of the things about all of this is, of course, um, getting kind of already a little bit tired of the manual parts of this. So let's, let's focus on that a little bit. Because if, if you have to actually uh, like download this HAR file, that's great. But you, you know, if you have to do this more often, like yep, for example, yep. if you want to start seeing trends over time, then it's going to be a little bit problematic, right? You're going to yep. see uh, you're constantly doing this manual work. So, so what tools are there, Ilya, for 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 automating this the the process? Well, sort of getting an army of monkeys. <laughs> um, the other way to do it is um, so actually there's there's a lot of different ways, right? And I'm actually really excited about this stuff. So let me show you some examples. So first of all, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Phantom uh, JS. <coughs> That's the headless browser now? Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. It's, a, it's a headless WebKit browser. <coughs> mm -hmm. right? and, and the cool thing about it, well, there's actually many cool things about it. We can probably do an entire show on it. But one of the things I like about it is it's very easy to download and install. It's a statically compiled uh, binary. So you just download this like zip file, you unpack it, mm -hmm. and it's basically a browser a full featured WebKit browser, which means it can execute JavaScript. It'll download your CSS images, everything, right? which is nice. And you can run it from the command line. So this is what I have here. right? Mm -hmm. I just downloaded the, uh, the actual file. I unpacked it, so I just have it sitting here. Okay. Right? <coughs> so now I can do bin. Mm -hmm. um, we have phantom. And if we look at this, you know, so it just gives you a little bit of kind of help information. So you can configure it any way you like. Right. But the way it basically works is, um, you need to give Phantom a script to tell it what to do, right? Okay. So think of it okay. as like this is a browser. We need to tell it like, hey, I want you to open a file sure. or sorry, a URL and yeah. do something there. Yeah. So it comes with a couple of different examples, uh, example scripts. So one of which is netsniff. Um, you can, I think you can guess what it's going to do, right? right? So it's going <laughs> to sniff on the network traffic and log that data. So uh, let me do this. So I'll actually download a page here. And if all goes well, uh, this should <coughs> run mm -hmm. Phantom. And look, it spit out what looks like a JSON yep. file. Yep. In fact, it looks like a HAR file. <laughs> Surprise. Very right? surprised. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let me actually just save that to a, an out file instead okay. of right. printing it right. to screen. Right? So, mm -hmm. so we're looking at this. Um, so once again, we have all the JSON data. So what, what, what just happened? I think this is very important. Mm -hmm. We have a fully featured browser that went in and captured all the network data. Right. Now, imagine if you could take you're this. you it on the command line. Right, right. Yeah, right. So imagine now you take this, and uh, you have your CI build running on your, exactly. on your exactly. instance, right? right? right, right. And after each check-in, you run this, and you capture the HAR file. Yeah. Right? And then now, now you have the full timeline. Of like on every check-in, you have a history of what happens. Maybe you added more resources and all the rest. Right, OK, OK, OK. Hey, actually. Uh, that actually is interesting because if you do that, and you combine it with running that for through say let's say analysis tools like PageSpeed, yeah. Wiseslow, uh -huh. is that already supported? You, you guys can <laughs> see that we practiced this <laughs> yesterday. So here's another tool that I love. Right. Um, so if you guys use Node, right. Right, There's right. actually a, a Wiseslow is available as a Node module, right? right. So okay. you can just run it. I already have installed it on my machine, but <clears throat> if you run npm install Wiseslow. Okay. Uh, that's what you're going to get. And so let me just. Ah, okay. right, right. So right. once you install yeah. it, you just get this uh, Wiseslow kind mm -hmm. of binary, right? So it gives you a couple of different examples here. So I'm just going to copy uh, this guy right here. I think there's actually a typo in the README. So we need mm -hmm. two, two double dashes. And guess what it takes? Right, a HAR file. It takes the HAR file. <laughs> it's getting old. Right, so, <laughs> right. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to print out. Actually, let me let me change this for one second. We're going to print out a basic summary, okay. Okay. Right. right? And format plain is just like plain text, okay. right? And feed it this HAR file, and it analyzes the HAR file and says, okay, there's 80 kilobytes of data that we downloaded here. The score, according to all of the Weisslow rules, is 100. Okay. Hooray! And there's total of seven requests for this, right? So that's that's kind of interesting. Now let's 
dig in a little bit deeper. That's a pretty good score. Yeah. <laughs> so let's run all, mm -hmm. right? And if you run all, all of a sudden you get a ton more output, yeah. right? Yeah. So what happens here is Weisslow has a set of rules um, or categories of rules <coughs> for things like, are you using a CDN? Um, are you setting expire setters? Are you compressing your data and all these things? Mm -hmm. as, you, as you can see, it's actually scored um, that entire hard file with right. respect to all those rules, and it's giving you specific score. So it just so happens that this page is actually fairly optimized. So there's no offenders in the sense that if there was a file that wasn't compressed, right. it would right. show up in here. OK. Right. Right? Right. right. So now we have two things. Yeah, exactly. We've captured the hard file from the command line. Right. We ran it through Yslow. And um, of course, you don't actually have to All from print the this out. Line. Right. And you don't have to print this out in right. you know, plain right. text. Right. To feed it to your own tool, I mean, this, mm -hmm. sure. you, know, you have JSON output. Yeah. So now you can. Like it literally in two lines of Bash script, you can get access to all the performance data. Right. So now, on right. like every CI check-in, I can run this and you know raise an alarm if yeah, all of exactly. a sudden you can set alarms for when you drop a certain uh, score or like for example, uh, images that are not compressed or that's right. that it picks up the typical why slow rules, um, yep. and and then that can trigger a whole chain of alarms and <laughs> yep. uh, ways to fix it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Exactly. Right, right. So is that also supported in PageSpeed? Um, it is. So it will require a little bit more work. But okay. if you go to the PageSpeed site, so I'm just looking at the PageSpeed mm -hmm. SDK, right? So you can actually download the entire SDK. It's an open source right. project. And if you build the SDK, you will actually get this binary called, um, guess what, har to PageSpeed. <laughs> and you feed it a har file, right. and you get a similar output. Right. Uh, but you know, perhaps slightly different rules and sl yeah. slightly different weightings as Weisslow. So if you're a PageSpeed fan, you can also use this, right? Nice. And and by the way, uh, PageSpeed SDK also comes with some really awesome tools like PageSpeed Optimize Image, <laughs> right? Uh, nicely named, yeah. very descriptive. So you just pass it an image file, and it'll automatically pick out the right format and optimize the stuff for you. That's something you can also do as part of your build process. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. So I think. When I first started looking at the HAR format and everything, I really thought of it f uh, primarily from like a browser perspective. And actually, after looking at this more, obviously it's uh, the browser making that HTTP request to the server and the server responding. Right. So when you start thinking about it that way, it's like, oh, okay, we can actually do a lot more with it. We can actually uh, go beyond the browser, if you will, mm -hmm. and start implementing HAR on the server side. Yeah, yeah. So, right? that, so that's a cool idea, right? Right. I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot of, of tools around that yet, yeah. but it's it's the same format. Right. <laughs> right. right. So maybe just right. to kind of elaborate this in a little bit, right? A lot of API servers or app servers that you right. build kind of follow the same pattern. A request comes in, then you have a dispatch to a database right. or maybe another HTTP server mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know does something. Right. And it's the same waterfall. Yeah, exactly. Basically. Exactly. But right. on the inside. <laughs> right. So it'd be kind of cool if we could right. visualize the same data. And we saw a whole number of different rules or like uh, tools rather, yeah. right, that we could use for this kind of stuff. Yeah. So let's take a look at sort of a, a sample file that you uh, you put together already sure. for this. Um, yeah. Basically, just to get the idea of, of what's happening here. Yeah. So I have this. I've mm -hmm. I've created kind of this mock file. Right. Right. Um, and how that's created is kind of a separate story. You could instrument your own app server. Or you can actually use some other trick, which we'll talk about in a second. Some sort of logging. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. 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 Right. So actually, I'm going to sneak in another demo. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So if you guys are working with hard files and you have them on disk, uh, there is this, and you have Ruby installed, which <laughs> you, know, if you probably do, um, you can actually do gem install har, right? <laughs> which, which creates this very, very handy utility. What you do is then you say har, it mm -hmm. installs this kind of bin script, and you pass it a file. Okay. All right. And check this out. So I'm going to run this. Wow. And it starts a local server, <laughs> right, fires which up. which embeds the hard viewer, right, and fires up a new tab on your thing and just visualizes it right here. How awesome is that? Wow. All right. So we don't <laughs> even have to copy it, go right. to the site right. and just kind of like right. feed it a file and there you go. Yeah. So next time somebody emails you or you have a bug report with a hard file, download it, run yeah. it with this. Yeah. You're you're up and running. OK, OK. All right. So let's look at this, uh, wh what's happening here, right? So we have this kind of a sample request mm -hmm. where we're kind of simulating in, let's say, an RSS feed application. OK, OK. okay. Right? Where uh, a request comes in for this feed ABC, mm -hmm. 
And the next thing that happens is we dispatch a search request for ABC, which okay. is basically like, what are the articles that I should show? Or yeah. what are the article IDs? Right? Let's say that returns a couple of different IDs, yeah. three. So that, that request takes you know, some time, 136 milliseconds. And you know, we have all of the header information on all the other mm -hmm. metadata mm -hmm. from our API server. Right. And then we, in parallel, dispatch three requests to fetch the articles. Yeah. Yeah. And then the response is returned. Yeah, you can really tra trace right into that and see where, where you're taking most of the time. That's awesome, right? Yeah. yeah. So now you can think about just instrumenting your app server and reusing the same tools. Yeah. Right? Like, this is great visualization. So, yeah, by sticking to that format, you really get <laughs> I mean, a lot of benefits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's <laughs> right. so many different right. tools out there, right? right? And and speaking of tools, so now let's let's take this use case, right? So we've we've captured a har file, yep. let's say, on the command line. Uh, we can run it through Yslow, which is very good for capturing, let's say, regressions or anomalies, mm -hmm. right? If somebody checks in, okay. <laughs> so it'll ingest this data, right? But now it's it gets smarter which is to say it looks at the URL which you were accessing, and it says, hey, you've actually uploaded not one, but mm -hmm. three traces right. of this file uh, spread across time. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize the difference in, let's say, mm -hmm. page loading time yeah. or total size. Right. So we actually have, as you can see here, we have three runs. Mm -hmm. Right. So this, I was playing with this on the weekend. And um, between these three different runs, so the yellow line here is the full load time. So the load time went up. You know, from yep. 0.75 seconds to about one second mm -hmm. between the three runs. Um, this graph is also very interactive, which I you know I didn't realize for a while. But <laughs> for example, I can disable this and load things like the onload time and time to first byte. Okay. Right. Yeah. So now I can imagine having this data for your site across, let's say, two weeks. And now you can go in and, and look at, well, you know, am I just putting more images, or yeah. why did my my load time re uh, you know, yeah. get worse? Exactly. exactly. And then you can also, you know, if you need a nice Artifact for your mm -hmm. next presentation, you can also just save that as a PNG image yeah. or an SVG. Right. Right. So that's cool. That that's kind of that allows you to trend it over time. Right. Right. Exactly. And within here, for each specific run, you of course have still have access to all of the metadata within each one. Right. So domains from which we fetched all the resources. It even embeds page speed scoring. Right. So it says, well, for this page, let's see, uh, cache validator. So some of the uh, resources didn't have a cache validator, so it gave me an 83. OK, right. interesting. The har viewer, right, as you would expect, Perfect. embedded in here. Um, and you can toggle between all the different runs. Right. 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 So here's a little tip, right? Like we've talked about those any number of times now, but you've captured it on CLI, you run it through YSLO, right. and then you can push it into here, and all of a sudden you have a performance monitoring solution. Exactly. In uh, like uh, uh, three lines of Bash script. That's incredible. Right. Incredible. And if if you guys are interested, I actually found this example on the uh, Har Storage Wiki. Um, mm -hmm. I uploaded right. the file right. manually, right. 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 but you can just you know here's four lines of Python where you just mm -hmm. encode the data, you push it in, and that's it. You're done. Right. 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 right? Perfect. So, very cool. Yeah, so I mean, we've looked at it from the browser perspective now. We've looked at it from sort of on the server side in the sort of the automation. Yep. Uh, one thing we, we we talked about briefly is sort of the mobile support, right? That's yeah. Like, obviously, you don't always have uh, Chrome developer tools on your mobile device. Yeah. Um, so, so how would you how would you use some of these tools to yep. to set that up? Right. So I actually made a. Oh wow. I cheated. I made a little it presentation. Slide, there are right. two, two slides. <laughs> so right. So you bring up a really good point, which is um, you know, if you're using, let's say, Chome on Android, right. you actually have remote debugging, which is absolutely yeah. awesome, right? Because right. you have access to the same network panel plus yep. all of the other, like even mm -hmm. JavaScript debugging. But what happens when you're running, an, let's say, an older, or older or another browser which doesn't have that capability? Right. And for just for those, uh, those of you attending, um, we did do a show on the Chrome uh, Mobile show mm -hmm. uh, just uh, last week on Chrome Mobile debugging. So awesome, if you're yeah. interested in that, just check yeah, it's it's an GDL. awesome tool. If you guys haven't used it before, definitely right. r recommend it. Right. Yeah, but yeah. here we're kind of talking about a slightly different use case, which yeah, is exactly. let's say I have an older phone or a phone with a browser that doesn't support this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could I still get access to this data? Right. It's, right. it's actually a little bit tricky if you think about it. Right. right. Like, how, how do you do that? So there's a trick. Um, and you know, there's I made a diagram just to explain it. Involves a yeah. proxy server. <laughs> yes, it involves a proxy server. So here's the trick: you have your phone, right. right? And I will assume that your phone can connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot. 
Sure. That's that. That's a requirement, unfortunately. Okay. If we can't do that, then we can't use this, tr this trick. But sure. let's assume it does, right? Okay. So what we do is we take our laptop, right, and we actually start a Wi-Fi hotspot on it. Yeah. So we basically, it becomes uh, starts to broadcast, mm -hmm. right? We then connect our phone to the laptop. Okay. Okay. Right. Gotcha. right. And yeah. now, if I'm browsing on my phone, I'm actually going through my laptop, mm -hmm. right? So. So far, so far, so good. Yep. Now, so what, what's going to happen is when I make a request on my mobile browser, it'll go to my laptop. My laptop will go to the server and just kind of funnel data mm -hmm. back and forth. Now, given that the data is flowing through the laptop, we can actually capture that data with a low-level uh, like tool, like a TCP dump or Wireshark. Exactly. I was right? going to say Wireshark, you can just yeah. capture everything. You can just right, say, right, like, right. capture on this interface mm -hmm. or this specific port or this IP, yeah. all that kind yeah. of stuff, right? Yeah. So. You run that capture, and what you get out of it is a PCAP file, mm -hmm. uh, which is just a very low-level, like, here are the IP packets and TCP packets that are flowing right. over the wire, right? So this is nothing that you would, like, consume without an additional tool. Yeah, it's not in a horror format. No, unfortunately <laughs> not, right? <laughs> yes. So I actually have a file that I'll show you guys. Right. Um, so I have a sample Wikipedia file where okay. I captured a PCAP file, right? And if I just open this in Vim, you know, it's gibberish because sure. it's just it's a binary format, mm -hmm. not not anything too interesting. Now, it turns out that there is actually a tool uh, called PCAP to Har, <laughs> which will take those IP packets right. and basically reconstruct or TCP packets and reconstruct the entire flow and create a Har file. Incredible. Right. 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 Yes. Perfect. So I actually let me see if I can find this tool here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. You can use PCAP to HAR to manually do this. Mm -hmm. So you capture the PCAP file, and then you, you know, get a HAR file out of it. And then yeah. you can use the HAR Ruby gem to visualize it. Right. Or there's this web app, uh, which allows you to just upload a PCAP file, and it'll do the encoding, and it'll just show you the thing. Okay. So okay. Let, let me show you this. So I have my Wikipedia HAR file here. Yep. Not a PCAP file. Sorry, okay. PCAP file, yeah, okay. yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to hit Upload. And so what we're doing is we're uploading the raw binary data. Okay, okay. It's going to run the transform to har. And look at that. Uh, now okay. we're looking at waterfall. the waterfall chart as captured from a mobile phone that you know, perhaps you couldn't, even con you couldn't configure a proxy server on it, right. or it right. uses some browser which doesn't support remote debugging. And can you grab the har, the raw data on the other tab there, the, the har JSON? Yeah, OK. Yeah, okay. yeah so you can actually, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, so you can also right. explore it, or you can Click on the download sure, har file, sure. and there you go. Right, full circle. Right. So, like uh, this tool, and we're only scratching the surface here, right? right. We just spent what forty minutes talking mm -hmm. about all the different ways we can use this. Yeah. Uh, but I think we've only scratched the surface, right. Right. right? Because we can use it on the server. We can use it to automate uh, performance monitoring. I think instrumentation is key, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. having um, tools like combining tools like har storage, har viewer, and others, you can literally build a performance monitoring dashboard for your you know, for your site or for your company Pretty awesome, in like right. a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there's so many tools around it, so it'd be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right, perfect. So uh, let's see if um, we have any other uh, questions. Oh, first yeah. of all, yeah, the, the links. Yeah. So, so uh, we covered a lot of stuff right, in here, right. right? So I actually created a uh, just a quick gist of a whole bunch of different links mm -hmm. for some of the tools that we covered. Right. I, I tried to capture them all here. So if you guys go to bit.ly slash harshow, um, you'll find all the links mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. And we'll actually also push out a, a blog post later today yeah, exactly. with a little bit more information on it. But we'll put it on their yeah. uh, Chrome developers, Google+. Yeah. Plus. But I would definitely encourage you guys right. to just explore it, You know, play with uh, the mm -hmm. har viewer. Uh, definitely try Phantom and see what you can do with it. Actually, one one quick note on Phantom: um, when you download the the file, it comes with the example files. So I showed you the net sniff. Yeah. There's actually a small bug in the net sniff file, which I fixed. And uh, you guys should go to the GitHub page for um, for Phantom, right? Right, and just copy the latest net sniff file. Okay. So it's it's there. It's fixed. It's just not on the latest release. Okay. So just FYI. We'll make a note of that in here. So right. Yeah. Good point. Um, Let's take a look if there's any questions on the. Uh, okay. Okay. There's a couple. Yeah. <laughs> so we got a question from Steve Souders. Wow, I think I know that guy. All right. <laughs> uh, does har file contain the response bodies? Um, so by default, if, when you export out of let's say Chrome Developer Tools, it does not contain the response body, but there is no reason why it can't. Right. right? So right. if you're writing your own tool, so for example, if you're scripting um, yeah. Phantom or something like that, no reason why you can't include it and 
you know, I think it would be really cool if, for example, HTTP Archive actually stored the bodies. Mm. Uh, sorry, the hparchive.org, the, the site, right? right, the, right. And then we can do more interesting analysis over time. Sure. Uh, it would require a lot more storage space. Right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's why it's not there by default, right? right. Yes. Right. Well, exactly. OK. Mm -hmm. so what about compressing HAR files? Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, as we saw, right, that we exported mm -hmm. one trace, 5,000 lines of JSON. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're storing these things over time, you probably want to compress them. And they will compress incredibly well. OK. Right? right. Yeah. So Should that I, the tools, uh, so out of coming out of Chrome DevTools or in other tools, you're just going to get the raw file, mm -hmm. raw JSON. It's up to you if you want to store it to archive it, or sorry, to compress it. Mm -hmm. So can the HAR format be extended to support information about requests that don't make it to the server, but instead hit the cache? Oh, interesting. Yeah. So actually, if you uh, capture the if you export out of Chrome DevTools, it will contain that data. Uh, it will so if you load your developer tools, it does show requests that are coming from the cache. Okay. Right, it actually indicates that, right. and it will be there in in the uh, exported HAR data. Okay. And the reason th usually the the quick way to spot it is when you look at those kind of chunks of JSON, you will see that some requests don't have any HTTP headers. Right. That's a giveaway that mm -hmm. this came out of the cache. OK. A couple more. Um, so browser mod proxy will capture and produce a HAR file, OK? And Charles can also be used as a proxy to generate HAR. Right. So I think this, this is more of a, a note from, from Andy, which is oh, a okay, really, yeah. really good point, which is uh, we talked about exporting this out of a browser. Mm -hmm. But you can use a tool like Charles Proxy or Fiddler or something else where it's a standalone app, right? So I could actually. Uh, run a proxy server on my laptop, and then connect from this laptop mm -hmm. to here, right, right? So just proxy everything through it and okay. capture this data, capture the HAR files on this sure. device. Yeah. So that's yeah. a really good point. Cool. Um, okay. One more. When you were looking at the HAR viewer, a JPEG appeared as the first request rather than the HTML page. Why does this happen? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, that could be could be a bug, but um, every Every request that is made has a timestamp within the um, the actual export, so it'll say when the request started, right? Which is how we determine in DevTools like where it, where in the yeah, timeline exactly. it should live, right? Right, right, right? So I'm not sure if the HAR spec specifically says that it must be sorted in order. You know, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But you can easily resort that data uh, based on the timestamp and get the exact timeline. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So I think that uh, that covers That's right. it. Right. Yeah. So. All right, so this is definitely a power tool, <laughs> right? Um, lots, lots and lots of stuff that you can do with it. Right. Um, and I think, you know, once again, instrumentation is key for anything to do with performance. And yeah, and all these tools, I mean, there's so much support for it, so this is really the, the way to go for all of this. So yeah, the yeah, so I definitely like encourage you guys to play with it. Yeah, and, um, yeah so we'll post the links. Yep. Uh, we'll post it at the, um, on the Chrome Developer uh, Google Plus page. and. You'll, you'll be posting your blog. Uh, yep, I'll soon, have so. a blog post up soon right. uh, uh, as well, just documenting some of the examples here. And then maybe just one quick note. I think we're, we're, we're done with this. Mm -hmm. But in our next episode, we're actually going to uh, take a look at Google Web Fonts, oh, great. which is going to be a, a really fun topic. I, I love Web Fonts. A lot of people have issues with Web Fonts when it comes to performance. Sure. So we're going to uh, do a deep dive on okay. what it takes to make Web Fonts fast and what Google Web Fonts specifically does okay. to make Web Fonts fast. And that's in two weeks? That's in Same time, right? Two, yep, two weeks. So yep, Tuesday. We'll, we'll announce it. But uh, yep. yeah, yeah. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot.